Good evening, Angela. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Sebastian. How are you? I'm very well, very well. Uh, so, so you're uh, across in, uh, in in Adelaide, and I'm yeah. here in uh, in Sydney, and super excited to uh, to meet up with you tonight to talk about your exhibition at Gallery Sally Dan Cuthbert, uh, Mortician's Garden, which uh, promises to be an incredible uh, an incredible show and a very varied show. Um, I thought I might start off by talking uh, about the title, which uh, which I love. And um, the sort of genesis of of how the how the title came about, Mortician's Garden. Yeah, I think first of all, I started looking at plants that I thought might survive. I mean, I've always been interested in in plants and, and animals, creatures that are um, you know really hardy, I suppose, and you know weeds or uh, plants that survive in extreme circumstances, I suppose, and then thinking about plants that might survive after um, you know, devastation, I suppose, to you know, the, the degradation of our environment and things. And, and I think the first piece I made looked a little bit like a, a, a bleached coral. So you know, it was quite very pale green, no glaze, and quite sort of a, a rugged texture look, I suppose. And it, that got me thinking about you know, plants that survive, I suppose, after, you know, the, the, not the death of, of us, but, but, you know, cataclysm, I suppose. And so the mortician's garden, you know, just thinking about, well, a mortician or a funerary parlour, what sort of plants would they have in their collection? And of course, I, you know, not too long after that, I connected with Morticia Adams and her name, of course. And then started thinking about the plants that she might have in her uh, collection. Yeah, of course, in the in the um, Adams Family TV yeah. series from the sixties, yeah. and then the subsequent kind of Hollywood movies, um, uh, yeah. which is a, a keen a keen gardener, um, and yeah. there's, there's beautiful images of her cutting the tops off the roses and just having the um, the, the thorny stems. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that um, the, the sort of natural world has always been a, a, a source of inspiration for you um, um, in, in your practice. And, and the, one of the things I love about this exhibition is that it's been conceived as an exhibition, not a, not a series of discrete works, although the, there are individual works. The yeah. work, work is a sort of collective, almost, almost like a kind of proto-laboratory um, that um, that that speaks to all these different forms, and and even even in the actual forms themselves, you, you've you've kind of created these these Frankenstein kind of forms where um, elements or details of of individual species are kind of spliced together to create these these sort of monstrous forms. Can you talk about um, uh, you know the natural world as a source of uh, inspiration in your work? Yeah, I I, mean, I suppose I have always been interested. Or for a long time, I've been interested in, you know, the the crossovers. I suppose, like the connections or the the lack of division in some cases between plant and animal, for instance, and between you know us as animals and other animals, uh, and us and vegetables in in a sense. Um, you know, there's this life form that's that that's that's kind of crosses over or that's um, common to all, you know, to all of us. And especially when you look at, um, you know, biology and you look through a microscope and you look at the details, you know, the cellular structure of plants and animals, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, distinguish sometimes. I mean, there's just a lot of similarity, basically. Yeah. And I'm interested in those connections that exist um, between all of us and, you know, all of the, the all of life forms I suppose um yeah yeah, yeah we, we talked a little while back about that incredible film the 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 power of 10 uh the uh short film by Charles and Ray Eames where they yeah. um, you know go go into the yeah. Uh, yeah. kind of level and then zoom out to the deepest reaches of space and of course yeah. the, the two extremes look exactly yeah. the same it's this universal kind of nature of yeah. of uh, form um 
What's really interesting, I guess, is is how this carries across both the two dimensional works in 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 the painted works and into the um, the sculptural works and, and the forms and and how they um, play together. Um, was it an enjoyable experience, sort of conceiving the exhibition and conceiving how how these elements might sort of riff off each other? I guess. Yeah, the, the, I, I always do drawings. Um before I make a three-dimensional work. So there's a lot of connections there to start with from my point of view. I mean, the process of course is completely different, um, but yeah, I just enjoy, you know, having that freedom, I suppose, to go between different medium, you know, not being totally stuck on, on one particular material all the time and, and experimenting a lot, especially learning new techniques to do with painting it's, it's quite a challenge you know I've become you know I've practiced for many years as, as a ceramicist or you know using clay as a medium and I know a lot about it it's, I mean not that it's easy for me to to make those works but you know it's not such a challenge as it is to work with paper or, or canvas and and paint you, know, you just have to try a whole lot of new things I suppose and yeah it's and I that's exciting I like doing that I like surprising myself uh, you know hopefully maybe surprising people that see the work um yeah. yeah, and and I love it because it's it's come out of you know like a you know a sort of a a dark a very dark period in Australian history with um, of course the the bushfires that 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 yeah. ravaged us and then straight into the the global pandemic and you know. So your kind of you know potential vision of an apocalyptic future doesn't seem that uh, that kind of removed from our, our current thing. But what I really like about the exhibition is that um, it's imbued with a great sort of sense of beauty, but also you know a sense of kind of humor and optimism and, and a lightness that I think um, is is so important when you're dealing with these uh, kind of topics and 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 sort of asking of the viewer to consider the world around them. I think it's a really positive and uh, nice uh, experience. Well, I hope people come away with those feelings of, of you know, beauty, of course, and, and, and hope and optimism and, and a sense of humour as well. Um, but then they're, they're not really things that I try consciously to work out. I mean, I'm really happy if they're, they're there, but it's kind of really hard to go into a practice, into to making a work and think, oh, I want to um, have hope or I want to have, yeah. um, you know, humour especially is really tricky, but I'm really pleased if they are there. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it was great in talking to you about uh, making this show, how you sort of paralleled, um, uh, you know, science and art, you know, yeah. two, two fields yeah. that are often you know considered directly opposite you know science is seen as very rational and yeah. based and art is very kind of you know you know sometimes seen as kind of airy and wishy-washy and conceptual but you talked about the process of of experimentation in both fields and also the process yeah. of discovery and how yeah. in science um this idea of blue sky thinking or unencumbered kind of thinking yeah. is often the, the gateway to a lot of um discovery yeah. Um, and of course, you know, we know this to be very uh, true of art making. Um, yeah. Was it an enjoyable process, that sort of daily discovery and, and creating these, these little uh, amalgamations of forms? Mostly. <laughs> Every now and again, you know, there's, there's uh, challenges, I suppose, or things get a bit repetitious. But no, I, I really love making the work that I make. And you know, just thinking, going back to the idea of the scientist and the artist and, you know, there's this sort of madness, I suppose, that's, you know, often kind of characterised in both fields, I think, the mad scientist, the mad artist, and, you know, they can, especially at the moment, I mean, we're so indebted to the field of science and the, the vaccines that they've been able to come up with. So, um, you know, I, I, of course, I appreciate that science can be used for evil, uh, you know, maybe art can be too, you know, if you're just doing propaganda or something like that, then yeah. that's, you know, but no, I tend to look on the bright side. So I, and I'm just an optimist at heart. So, um, you know, I see the good in science and the good in art and yeah. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I think that that very much um, uh, shines through in the exhibition. So, yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you very much, Angela, for, for, for your time. And, uh, look forward to the show. Thank you. Yeah.